So I'm here in front of the bank. And why am I showing you a bank? And if you're listening to this, you can't see it. I'm in front of a BB&T bank, which is a regional bank in my area, in my state. And the reason I'm showing you that is I was talking to somebody the other day about private lending and hard money lending and things like that. And if you want to be a passive investor, there's a couple of ways that you can do that. You can invest passively in other real estate deals, uh, which can be good. You can earn, uh, you know, 10 to 15 percent sometimes with the uh, internal rate of return over the life of that investment. Uh, but you could also uh, there's another way where you could take advantage of the velocity of cash flow and invest your money as a private lender. So private lending is a great way to go. You actually become the bank. So you can become just like this bank right here, and you can loan your money out to real estate investors that are uh, flipping houses, building houses. There's uh, a lot of builders that use private money instead of bank money. And um, real estate investors that uh, buy and sell houses, they either uh, renovate and sell them like you see on HGTV, or they might do what's called a retail wholesale, and they might buy it off market, uh, do some cosmetics to it, cosmetic repairs, minor uh, things, you know, clean it up, a little landscaping, a little paint, put it back on the market and sell it. Uh, so you can become the bank on those deals. You can also loan money to people doing more, bigger deals, commercial deals for the earnest money uh, and the front end due diligence money, things like that. So the cool thing about private lending is that you can you can take advantage of compounding and velocity of cash flow. So you can roll your investment over two, three, four times a year, depending on what the project looks like and what that investment looks like. If it's a house flipper, uh, those are going to tend to go quicker than a new construction house. So you can roll, let's say you've got, you know, $100,000 that you want to put out there uh, to an investor and they use that and pay it off two times a year and you get 10% on that money. So you've just earned $20,000 in the course of a year on that $100,000. Now you have $120,000. So you roll that and then it grows and goes and goes from there. So obviously the more you have, the more uh, better advantage you can take of that and the faster it'll compound. But that's what private lending is. You're basically becoming the bank and you are holding a note and deed of trust, first lien position. You're secured and insured uh, on that real estate. So the investor will give you a note and deed of trust on that real estate. So in a deed in lieu, so that if anything happens, you don't even have to foreclose. Property goes back to you. You just take it over um, and move on with the, with the project, uh, finish it yourself or hire somebody else to do it. Hopefully that doesn't happen. You want to find good qualified operators to lend to so that you don't have to worry about that. You could also lend to people that can't get a mortgage. Um, and you could be a private lender to help them get into a house and they pay you off at some point down the road, kind of like an owner finance, except you're just lending the money and you're becoming a private lender, private bank. So that is basically how private lending works. You find a qualified operator or a borrower that you can trust and rely on that knows what they're doing. You lend the money. You take a first deed position, a note deed of trust, a lien, a mortgage, whatever it is in your state uh, so that you are secured and insured on that investment. And you roll it over as many times as you can in a year. And that is a great way to take advantage of compounding interest and the velocity of cash flow.